Hi, it's Karen from Simply Said with Karen, and today I want to take you through on how to create this really cute and pretty decoration that um, uses the festive flurry stamp set and matching framelits. You can use it to decorate a package or a card or you put a ribbon on it and it can become a decoration for the tree. <clears throat> for this one I chose to do it in blues and silvers with the silver glimmer paper and the in Island Indigo ink and um, Bermuda Bay uh, ink as well as embossing one layer with the smoky slate embossing powder. However, there's nothing to say that you can't switch those colors up and use the reds and the golds and the greens or, you know, if you choose you can use navy and silver and white. So it's the choice is yours, but I'm going to just take you through the steps on how to create this and I, I've got a lot of the supplies already prepared. So the first thing you need to do is you need to stamp two of the largest uh, festive flurry snowflakes and that's this one here that's in a single uh, case on its own. So I stamped two of those in Island Indigo. I then took the the smallest of or the largest of the three individual um, festive flurries die cuts which is this one and cut it out with and use this uh, silver glimmer paper to cut it out then I stamped the second smallest with Versamark and embossed it with the Smoky Slate embossing powder and cut it out with the matching framelit. And for the final one I used Bermuda, Bermuda Bay and stamped it with the smallest snowflake and then cut it out with the matching die cut. So we have all our materials here. I then cut out a Smoky Slate circle and this one uses the sixth largest circle from the circle framelits collection so that's done and I cut about um, eight inches of silver ribbon and that's going to become our hanger if you wish to put it on a tree so let's get started so the first step is to take your two uh, snowflakes that you uh, stamped with the Island Indigo and cut it out with the largest uh, Festive Flurry framelit. And I'll bring my scoreboard in here. And what you need to do is you need to score each of the uh, points on the snowflake. But what you need to do is decide if you want to make the largest point um, a mountain fold or the smallest point um, um, a mountain fold. So depending on which one you choose then the rest of them will become a valley fold. So I'll just show you. I'm going to actually do the smallest ones with the valley fold or sorry the mountain fold. And because it's quite difficult to line it up and make sure that you're on the right track, um, I'm just going to start from the middle and go up and then come down and then turn it to the next one. Start from your middle and go up and line it up and then come down middle. So when you um, do the uh, large ones 
uh, turn it over so that the ink is up so then it's easier actually to do a uh, ballet fold when you've scored on this side. So just take it from the center and score up and then from the center to score down. Now you need to do that this to both of the snowflakes. So I'm just going to continue uh, scoring these and then I'll come back and show you how to do the rest of it. Okay, I'm back and I've got both of the snowflakes scored now. And so what you do is you take a pair of scissors and you cut along um, one of your score lines into the center. And then you do the same to the other one. Just make sure you cut them both on the same tip of your snow snowflake. I'll just take the scoreboard out. So now you just start to fold. And because I've chosen to make the smaller ones my mountain, I'm going to start folding my snowflake here. Just make sure you get a good crease. And then the next one's a mountain fold and then the valley fold. So I will continue to fold these and get them ready and I'll come back and show you how to put this all together. <coughs> so I have my snowflakes all folded up and I brought out my silicone pad because it's great when you're using glue, doesn't matter hot glue, liquid glue, because it doesn't stick, the glue doesn't stick to this and so it doesn't get all over your work surface. And for this one I found I used a fair amount of glue. So I've chosen to use the uh, multi-purpose liquid glue because I find this really sticks and hopefully it um, is ready to go. Yeah. So for this what you want to do is yes you could uh, fold them like this. Sorry, got the wrong end up here. You could fold it like this and attach it here but then you've got a really defined um, edge and it's you know kind of a sharp edge so what I've done is I've taken it and I've just overlapped um, the large point and half of the smaller point on each side so I'm just going to take my glue and put the glue on there and because this glue takes a bit to dry it's really great when you have to line things up. So there's the first edge that's that's glued. So now we'll just come over and do the next one. So that's set up a bit. And basically you're almost finished because the only thing you have left to do now and then is to um, assemble it and put it together. There. So because this is a 3D we want it to uh, really appear to be so. So I'm going to use a stack of dimensionals. So I've used about three here. So I'm going to now attach my dimmer paper snowflake and just kind of see where you want, how you want to position this. I'm going to use a, another dimensional and take your, your uh, smoky slate embossed one and just lay that on 
and finally the smallest one. And finally, to really spruce it up, you can add an embellishment. And I've chosen to add the um, frosted finishes embellishment. So it'll sit right there. And I'm going to use uh, glue dots to attach it. There, it's coming together. So we just need to finish it up by putting a backing on it. And like I said, I chose to use a smoky slate. So that's going to just fit around like that. And here is my silver ribbon. So I'm going to put the glue on. And I'm going to put it up the point. I'm just going to slip the ribbon in. Sometimes I don't know about you, but I find that I get as much glue on me sometimes as I do on the project. And then just apply your backing. And again, you're going to have to let this sit. And you might have to move around the, the backing so it's centered. So we'll just hold that down for a few seconds for it to set up. So it's it's set up, but um, I, I wouldn't hang it from anything at this point. You can um, just set it aside and let it dry. Now, if you're going to make a package for this and attach your decoration to it, this package was just made using the um, envelope punch board. And then I just did a belly band around it to hold it. And because I want them to be able to use this as a, a tree ornament, I did a, attach it down to the belly band. So, um, because they'll just be unwrapping it and then they can... Uh, hang it on the tree. So there you have it. If you want information on how to um, create the box from the uh, envelope punch board, you can go to my website. It's www.simplysaidwithkaren.com and there is um, on the top the index there and you can look under cool tool video tips and the um, the uh, box video should be there in the, either the first or the second um, video on that page. So have fun with this and like I said you can change up the colors and um, add different types of embellishments so it's all up to you as to how you want to create your very own Christmas tree decoration. So thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye! <laughs>